You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another review. This will be a raw review, similar to Red Eye Raw, where it's not going to be edited and it's going to be with the camera. Let me know in the comments if you want these types of reviews to be part of Red Eye Raw as like a sub-series, kind of like Life of Red Eye and Red Eye Recommends, or if this should be its own thing. Like, should this go in the Red Eye Raw playlist, etc. But I bought this yesterday, because I got a Walmart gift card and a raffle at work, and, uh... This was 23 bucks, 24 bucks, and I got a $25 gift card. So I decided to get it, the complete series of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the original 1987 series. So I bought that set yesterday, and I watched all of season one last night. Now, before you think that sounds crazy, season one's only five episodes. It's very short, and it tells a complete story arc. Um, and that's something I was surprised at, was just how much continuity there was in season one. Now... Granted, I did watch a little bit of 80s Ninja Turtles when I was a kid, but very limited. So, uh, for instance, I grew up on the 2003 Ninja Turtles. I watched most of that as it was coming out, as well as TMNT Fast Forward, the sequel to that. As well as I saw the 90s movies, and I saw TMNT, you know, the 2007 movie uh, with the 3D CGI. Uh, but with my exposure to the 80s series itself was very limited in that... Uh, the, the only, the first thing I saw of it was, uh, when I first had my blood drawn, or at least the first time I can remember, when they were doing blood work on me in a lab to, just to do some tests and stuff, you know, standard checkup stuff when you're a kid. And when they drew my blood, they, uh, they have this little box where you can pick a prize out of. And the prize that I chose was a VHS tape of TMNT from the, like, the 80s series. Uh, specifically, it was the VHS, uh, Super Bebop and Mighty Rocksteady. Or was it Super Rocksteady and Mighty Bebop? It's something like that, right? If I'm not mistaken, the tape had, like, three episodes on it. The main feature being the Super Rocksteady and Mighty Bebop episode. Uh, where Bebop and Rocksteady get, like, enhanced to be even more powerful. And I love that tape. Uh, but, uh, I also... Got, would later get some of those discs that came in serial boxes of TMNT that would have random episodes from the 80s series, just as, like, compilation discs. And you'd get them in serial boxes. Uh, I think we got all of those, but I could be wrong. We had, like, four or five of them, maybe six, I don't remember. Uh, they're in the zip-up case, but I keep that uh, not in here, so... I don't want to get up and go grab it right now, but I have shown it in a video before. Uh, but... With the, uh, two th I did always prefer the 2003 series than when I was watching the 80s series, uh, mainly because the 2003 series I always felt was darker and more serious in tone. Having watched season one, however, I was surprised to find out that the original series can be pretty dark and serious in tone, too. And in fact, uh, the, uh, it has way more continuity than I thought it would. Like, each episode takes place immediately after the previous episode, and carries over plot points. I thought they were fairly self-contained in the 80s series, but at least for season one that seems not to be the case, which was actually pretty refreshing. I was happy to see it's actually one big story. And an aspect I really like of the 80s series, that I think I appreciate more as an adult than I did as a kid, is just how fucking 80s it is. Um, when I was watching it, it gave me serious, like, old-school 80s OVA vibes with some of the character designs, backgrounds... Uh, like, there was Mohawks, there was some cyberpunk stuff thrown in there. It's very, like, it is aesthetically one of the most 80s things I've ever seen. Um, and like I said, it feels like watching an 80s anime series. And there's a reason for that. Apparently the first three seasons were done by Toei Animation. So, that's a good, like, that's, that's a good indicator of why I like the animation so much. Because old school Toei was great. Like, I don't like Toei as a company. Because their copyright shit is bullshit, and a lot of the stuff they make now I don't really care for. But old school, like, 70s, 80s, 90s Toei, I love their animation. So, it's no surprise to me that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animation was so good, at, at the very least when Toei was doing it. Um, there, there's a lot of things from this I didn't even realize before. Uh, for instance, Krang and I think the Mutagen also come from Dimension, both come from Dimension X. Uh, which is an alternate dimension. I knew about Dimension X because I knew about the episode Hot Rodding Teenagers from Dimension X, although I'd never seen it. There was just always an ad for it on the VHS tape I had. So, in a way, the stuff that turned them into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is interdimensional. It's just the, the, the ooze itself is, right? The, uh, the mutagen. 
You also see them create the uh, the turtle van, or as I typically refer to it as the battle shell, because that's what it's called in the 2003 series. So if you ever hear me use that term, that's what I'm talking about is the turtle van. Battle shell sounds so much cooler to me, but apparently it wasn't called that in the original series. Uh, not to mention, again, there was a comic series before the 80s series, which I haven't seen yet, but I do plan to read at some point. I do have a couple issues somewhere uh, packed up in the boxes still. But yeah, I didn't know that Splinter was part of the foot. I They probably mentioned that in one of the movies or other adaptations I saw. But I just kind of forgot that Hamato Yoshi was originally part of the foot ninja clan. Uh, like, I knew that Shredder, like, betrayed him. But I never put together, I guess, in my head that they were part of the same ninja clan. Um, also, I guess in some versions, uh, Shredder is, or Splinter was Hamato Yoshi. In other versions, he was his pet rat. I always thought he was his pet rat, but then, of course, when we wa when I watched season one, in this version, he is Hamato Yoshi himself turned into a rat. But yeah, I gotta say, the animation's great, the continuity's great, I love the 80s aesthetic. Um, I like that it's a one full story arc that it tells throughout each episode, because, you know, episode one, you get introduced to the Turtles and April O'Neil. Episode two, you get introduced to uh, the Shredder and uh, Krang. And then throughout, you get introduced to Baxter Stockman, who builds the Mauser robots, and also is the one who they get the turtle van from, because they get the van and then they rebuild it as the turtle van. And you get introduced to Dimension X as a concept, and Krang, and then you see Bebop and Rocksteady get created. I think it's like the third or fourth episode that Bebop and Rocksteady become mutated, uh, because the Shredder builds them to combat against the, uh, the turtles. One interesting choice I thought they did with the DVD is the DVD... For uh, for season one, has bonus episodes from season ten that will just automatically play if you do play all. I stopped. I'm not watching season ten until I get to season ten. I just think it's interesting that the season one DVD includes episodes from season ten, so you get the first season and the last season. But it's like if the show remains so story driven, which admittedly it might not, because again I remember. The episodes I watched growing up from the VHS and the Serial Box DVDs being fairly self-contained. But if there is still an underlying continuity, I would think it's odd to just skip to the final season. I do know the final season's drastically different, though, because isn't it, like, darker and it has a red sky and a bunch of other stuff? I also did some looking into it, and apparently Casey Jones is in the 80s series. I didn't think he was, but he's apparently pretty minor and is only in, like, five episodes of the series. I haven't gotten to him yet because he's not in season one. Uh, but that's kind of a shame to me, because Casey Jones is one of the coolest characters in the series. I wish he would be more prominent, but it's cool that he's in it all, because I didn't know he was. I thought he was introduced in the 2003 series. I knew he was in the comics, I just didn't think he got put into the 80s series, so I guess it was a surprise. Again, I haven't gotten to those episodes yet, I was just looking up little details and tidbits here and there. Because uh, I do that, because, I don't know, I'm retarded sometimes. But, uh, yeah, no, I was surprised how genuinely good the first season of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was. Like, I knew I'd like it, but I didn't know it would be, like, a really good story, too. Like, to me, it just felt like I was watching an anime uh, with a lot of, like, how it was a serialized plot. You know, there was fighting in it. The animation was done by Toei, so there you go. It very much felt like watching an old-school anime, which I tend to like to do. So I, I really look forward to continuing the series. I'll probably watch some of season two today. Uh, I, think see I think the rest of the seasons are longer. Um, I could be wrong, but, uh, I know that, uh, season three and four get really long. Uh, I know that pretty much all the episodes I've seen are from, like, seasons three and four, I think. Maybe from season two, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know where all the cereal box ones come, come into play, and I did watch those as well. And my brain kind of crosses wires, like, there's an episode with a bull in a china shop that I remember, but I can't remember if it was on the VHS or if it was on one of the cereal box DVDs. So there you go. Um... But yeah, overall, uh, I really enjoyed this season. Really good show. Had a great story, great characters. Um, yeah, s surprisingly well-written. Like, again, I knew it was good, but I didn't know it was this good. Uh, so I probably want to rewatch the uh, 2003 series after this and then compare and contrast and see where I actually line up on them later. Um, but yeah, season one is great. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoyed this raw review. Again, remember to let me know down in the comments below if you want this to be a sub-series of Red Eye Raw or a separate series that's just similar, uh, and if you want to be in the Red Eye Raw playlist or not. And if you want to see more of these, let me know.
Obviously, I'll do more edited reviews later. Uh, I'm just really lazy when it comes to setting up the computer. Like, I just got to run a uh, a uh, Ethernet cord to the router. Although, again, I want to run it through the ceiling, so I kind of want to drill drill it. But I don't know exactly what I need to do with that because I'm fucking incompetent. Anyway, uh, I will do some edited reviews in the future too. But let me know if you want to see more of these raw ones every now and then to mix it up. I've done videos like this before that are raw reviews. I just never called them that before. Uh, like, some of my earlier reviews were all like this. Uh, movies you've probably never fucking heard of is similar, but it's edited. Uh, whereas this, I'm not editing, I'm just using the pause button every now and then. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. Toodles.